Welcome YouTubers to today's true crimes video. We will be looking at unresolved crimes. The most famous unresolved crimes is the Zodiac Killer. He went on to kill five people seemingly at random in Northern California during the years 1968 to 1969. The killer was notorious for enjoying the media's attention by sending cryptic messages to the media and FBI. Although it was confirmed that he killed five victims, there was other murders that he claimed and other authorities claimed it was the Zodiac Killer. However, looking over FBI files, we can get a timeline of what was confirmed to be the killer. On Christmas 1968, a young boy and girl parked on Lover's Lane area of Vallejo, California, was shot and killed. The couple was identified as David Faraday, 17, and his 16-year-old date, Betty Lou Jensen. This marked the beginning of what was known as the Zodiac Killer. The FBI reported that the killer used a 22 caliber semi-automatic pistol in which he sneaked up on the couple and shot them. And then it was reported that on July 4th, 1969, there was another young couple killed on the same area of Lover's Lane in Vallejo area. The girl was shot, so was the boy, but he was in critical condition, but didn't survive long. Then we have during August 1969 that the killer famously sent anonymous letters to the newspaper in Vallejo, the San Francisco Examiner. He confessed to the killings and su relating surrounding events. He enclosed ciphers, which the anonymous writer demanded to be printed in the newspapers, or he threatened to kill more people. The San Francisco Examiner received the letter that was the most chilling part when they uncovered the code, which stated, I like killing people because it's so much fun. The identity of the Zodiac Killer has stemmed from law enforcement officials, professional code breakers, and armchair criminologists for the five decades of the case went on. While, uh, while officially connected to five murders and two attempted murders, the Zodiac hinted he killed at least 37 victims after taunting the police and the public with nearly two dozen communications. He seemed to vanish in the late 1970s. The killer's legacy inspired copycat killers, dozens of books, TV shows and movies. Most famously, Clint Eastwood's nemesis in the film Dirty Harry. As we look through the timeline, we get a report in June 4th, 1963, the first couple to be murdered and linked to the Zodiac Killer, where the murder happened in Santa Barbara. We can report that Robert Domingos and his fiancée Linda Edwards were seniors at Lampoke High School in Santa Barbara County in Southern California. On Tuesday in early 1963, the couple decided to use the Senior Ditch Day to go sunbathing on a beach near Gavota State Park. When the two teenagers didn't return home by Wednesday, Robert's father went to the beach and was horrified to discover their bodies lying together inside the remains of a crumbling shack. The victims bound with rope had apparently tried to escape, but were shot and killed with a 22 caliber weapon. Robert was shot 11 times and Linda had been shot nine times. The killer then dragged the bodies to the shack where he tried and failed to start a fire. Investigators had few leads, but in 1972, the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department announced a possible Zodiac connection. The beach killer used Winchester Western Super X ammunition, the same ammunition used by the Zodiac during the 1968 murders on Lake Herman Road. The Domingos Edwards case also has similarities to the Zodiac's attack of a young couple at Lake Berryassa in 1969. And then moving on to a later date of October 1966 of another murder which possibly could have been connected to the Zodiac in the Riverside area. 18-year-old Sherry Josephine Bates lived with her father, Joseph and was a student at Riverside City College in Riverside, California. On October 30th, 1966, she left a note that read, Dad, 
went to the RCC library. The next morning, her Volkswagen Beetle was found abandoned in the library parking lot and her body was lying nearby between two houses. She had been stabbed several times and her throat was slashed. Police found a men's Timex watch at the crime scene, a, printed, a print from a military boot and some hairs in dry blood on the victim's head. Sherry Jo's purse was intact and an autopsy revealed no evidence of sexual assault. One month after the murder, the local newspaper and the police department received typewritten letters titled The Confession from someone who claimed to be the killer. The author wrote, Miss Bates was stupid. She went to the slaughter like a lamb and added, I'm not sick, I'm insane. In April 1967, the newspaper, the police and Joseph Bates received virtually identical handwritten letters which read, Bates had to die. There will be more. The notes were signed with a symbol which resembled the letter Z. In 1969, Riverside Police contacted investigators in Northern California recording the similarities between the Zodiac crimes and the murder of Sherry Jo Bates. Sherwood Morrill, then documents examiner for the California Department of Justice, concluded that the Zodiac was responsible for the notes linked to the Bates case. The Riverside connection was later revealed to the public by Paul Every, reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle. The Zodiac wrote, I do give them credit for stumbling across my Riverside activity, but they are only finding the easy ones. There are a hell of a lot more down there. Years later, Riverside police rejected the Zodiac theory and focused on the man they said was a jilted former lover of Bates. In the late 1990s, police obtained a sample of the suspect's DNA to compare with the DNA taken from the hairs found in the victim's hand. In 1966, the DNA didn't match and the suspect denied any involvement in the murder. Now we move into the confirmed connection with the Zodiac Killer in December 20th, 1968. Five nights before Christmas, high school students Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday set out on their first official date, promising Betty's Lou parents they'll be home by 11 p.m. Shortly after that time, passing motorists saw the Rambler and its occupants parked at Lover's Lane spot along Lake Herman Road in Benicia, California. Moments later, another driver noticed two seemingly lifeless bodies on the side of the road. Benicia police and others responded to the scene and discovered Betty Lou dead with five bullet wounds in her neck. David was found next to the Rambler with a bullet wound in his head, still breathing but near death. Bullet holes in the car's roof and back window indicated that the killer might, might have fired warning shots to force the victims out of the vehicle. Shell casings recovered at the crime scene identified ammunition as Winchester Western Super X copper code. Ballistics evidence indicated that the killer used a 22 caliber, possibly a J.C. Higgins model 80 semi-automatic pistol. Investigators believe the two teenagers were, li were likely random targets killed by a stranger for unknown reason. Then we move into July 4th, 1969, in the area of Jeho. 22-year-old Darlene Ferron was a wife, mother, and a popular ra waitress at a Vallejo restaurant. On the night of July 4th, she picked up a friend, Michael Magu, and stopped her cover in the parking lot of Blue Rock Springs Park. Michael later told police that another vehicle pulled into the lot around midnight and then only and then left only to return minutes later. The driver got out of the car, shined a bright light and fired into the cover with a 9mm handgun. Michael was shot in the jaw, shoulder and leg. Darlene was hit several times. At 12.40 p.m. in a call later traced to a gas station payphone, a man rang the Valjejo Police Department and claimed responsibility for the shooting as well as the murders on Lake Herman. According to the police dispatcher, the caller spoke in a low, monotonous voice saying, I want you to report a murder. If you will go on one mile east on Columbus Parkway, you will find kids in a brown car. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. 
I also killed those kids last year, goodbye. Darlene died on arrival at the hospital, but Michael survived. Investigators were unable to identify any viable suspects. During the year 1969, the Zodiac Killer sent four correspondents, one to the Vallejo Times, the other, th the other three to the San Francisco Examiner. The first letter he sent to the Val Vallejo Times Herald, postmarked July 31, 1969, the writer claimed responsibility for the two shootings and provided details about the victims the weapons, the number of shots fired, and the brand of ammunition. The second letter sent to the San Francisco Cor The second letter sent to the San Francisco Chronicle postmarked July 31, 1961, one or three virtual identical letters accompanied by one third of a cipher. The writer demanded publication of the letters and ciphers by Friday. August 1st, and the other letter sent to the San Francisco Examiner, postmarked July 31st, 1969. The writer threatened to kill again if new newspapers, and the third letter sent on the same day to the San Francisco Examiner, postmarked July 31st, 1969. The killer threatened to kill again if newspapers did not publish the cipher which included the words I like killing people because it's so much fun and then another three page letter that was received by the San Francisco examiner on August 4th 1969 sent in the letter was a response to the police asking for information to prove a three page letter was received by the San Francisco examiner on August 4th, 1969, sent in response to the police asking for information for the writer to prove he was the one who committed the murders. This was the first use of the name the Zodiac. As we move on to 1969, we have another possible victims of the Zodiac Killer. In the area of Lake Berryasse on a Saturday in late September, college students Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were relaxing on the shore of Lake Berryasse, some 30 miles north of Napa, California. A man appeared holding a gun and wearing a hooded costume with a white cross circle stitched over the chest explaining he had escaped from prison and needed money and a car to escape to Mexico. The stranger bound their wrists and pre-cut lengths of plastic clothesline. Without warning, he plunged a large knife into Brian's back six times and then he stabbed Cecilia ten times. As she fought for her life, the man walked to Brian's car and used a pen to draw a crossed circle on the door with the dates and locations of the previous attack. The date, September 27, 69, the time 6.30, and the notion by knife. At 7.40 p.m., a man called the Napa Police Department to report a double murder. The caller described Brian's car, directed police to the scene of the crime, and confessed, I'm the one who did it. Police traced the call to a payphone at a car wash in Napa. Cecilia died two days later, but Brian survived. The last confirmed killing of the Zodiac was from a cabbie called Paul Stein, a 20-year-old age student and husband who worked as a cab driver in San Francisco. That night, Stein picked up a fare headed for a destination in the upscale Presidio Heights neighborhood at the intersection of Washington and Cherry Streets. The passenger shot Stein in the head and removed a piece of the victim's shirt. The man walked away just before police arrived but the police radio broadcast mistakenly described the suspect as a black man and passing officers dismissed a white man resembling the correct description. Fingerprints found on the driver's side of the cab may have belonged to the killer and a sketch was produced based on descriptions provided by witnesses. The case was considered a routine robbery until the office of the San Francisco Chronicle received an envelope with a letter from the Zodiac which began with the words I am the murderer of the taxi driver. The envelope also contained a blood-stained piece of Paul Stein's shirt. The Zodiac denied he left fingerprints and claimed the police sketch was inaccurate because he had worn a disguise. While there were other murders that happened during this time, it was possibly linked 
in the Zodiac, but never confirmed. The Zodiac would continue sending letters to the San Francisco Chronicle. He sent a letter to a famous attorney, Melvin Belvey, postmarked December 20th, 1969 where he feared that he would kill again and asked Belly to intercede. The letter ended, Please help me, I cannot remain in control much, young, much longer. During the year 1974, we would see sporadic letters being sent to the San Francisco Chronicle, neither confirming he was the Zodiac, but under many other aliases. The last letter recorded to have been received was July 8, 1974 at the San Francisco Chronicle, postmarked July 8, 1974. The writer complained that Chronicle columnist Count Marco Spinelli suffered from a serious psychological disorder and should be sent back in the hellhole. The letter was signed, The Red Phantom. Investigators meanwhile have named only one suspect, convicted child molester Arthur Leah Allen of Vajejo. Allen owned boots identical to those worn by the Zodiac and said in an interview once that his favorite story was the most dangerous game which the killer had referenced in one of his letters. He was picked out in the photo lineup many years after the attacks by one of the Zodiac's surviving victims. He also wore a watch with the Zodiac's crosshair symbol on it, reportedly partially conversed to a friend interviewed by investigators, and was fingered as the culprit in former Chronicle political cartoonist's authoritative 2002 book Zodiac unmasked. Allen, however, died of a heart attack in 1992 at the age of 58, before detectives could make enough of a case to charge him. Ever since, police from Napa, Salona, and San Francisco counties where the killing occurred have continued to scrap through every clue they have filled in storage cases closets, not to mention streams of tips still pour in. San Francisco alone has about 30 boxes of evidence, including blood splattered door of the taxi in which the Zodiac shot to death his last victim, Cabby Paul. Well, we come to the end of the video. Thank you YouTubers for once again looking at another True Crimes video. If you like the content, give a share, like and subscribe and help us spread the word for this channel. Thank you. Bye.